Okay, we've got the Kia V6 here. These are super prone for the threads in the block stripping out, uh, making your head bolts loosen and start blowing head gaskets. That's what's happened to this one. Um, there is a repair for it. Kia say to replace the block. We're not doing that. Um, this guy by the name of Norm, I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, he's got a website there. He has a solution for this. Um, he says it's the benchmark in head bolt thread repair and I would agree. It is a really high quality set of uh, tools and equipment to fix this problem. It basically consists of these awesome inserts um, and I've done two of them here already and the insert sits way down inside the block, down, down deep in here and he gives you all the specs and everything you need to um, finish this job. Let's have a look what's in the kit. Now this is not one of those unboxing videos and nor do I generally um, promote other people online here, um, but this guy's kit is fantastic. The quality of it is first class. Um, he has instructions obviously for the Kia and he has general instructions for any other vehicles. All the inserts, look, thread locker oil. Um, we got some taps, the drills, and then all these machine guides as well. A um, couple of depth gauges. Look, I can't endorse this enough. It's fantastic. Let me show you how it works. Now, also remember, this is not just for the Kias and the Hyundais. Um, it's for a whole stack of other different vehicles as well. Let me take you through the steps of how we repair it. We need this surface nice and clean, and I do need to get out these two locating lugs here. Sometimes you're lucky and just with a set of multi-grips you can kind of grab it and like this one, just give it a bit of a wiggle and sort of pull it out at the same time. Pop it up and out. Sometimes they really don't like moving like that one. I do have a hack for it. Um, I use a drill and I close the jaws right down onto it. It's closing down there and then I'll tighten that chuck right up. It's a bit awkward with this filter housing here, but I've still got, still got it. And then just hopefully with this, just twist and pull. Just make sure that your chuck is actually tight enough and it's twisting this. And then we pop it out. Look, that is one way of doing it. If that doesn't work for you, you're gonna probably have to use some sort of a stud removal or something like that to get it out. Now to set this up, there's two different guides. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. Um, the smaller one's what we need first because we use this locating dowel just to make sure that we get it centered over the bolt hole. Now we've already done these two. Um, I'm gonna show this one fully on camera. It is a bit of a long process. It does take a while. Um, and I would suggest go slow with it. Um, so we want to locate this jig up over that hole. So we can use this hole here to support it or over this way or this way. Now I do know that the threads in these ones aren't great. So I'm actually going to use my new one that I've done here. Because I'm doing that, I'm going to use a new bolt in there. Um, I just don't want old threads in that new insert. So we'll put a new bolt. Um, and we've got a little spacer here with it as well. Again, just make sure that's nice and clean. And we'll just start winding that down. Okay, put the little insert in there. I'll just tighten that up. Now, whilst this is still loose here, I want to use this taper in that hole and just line things up. You've got to be careful you're not going to go into the wrong hole here. Make sure you put it in the right hole. A little bit of weight keeping that in place and we'll just tighten this down. It doesn't need to be super tight but I do want it uh, from not, not moving, like it needs to be firm. You do want to double check everything so just make sure that that hole in there is still centered in the middle and it didn't slip while you tighten things up. Obviously while you're drilling you're going to get a whole lot of shavings and stuff so we need to cover the engine up as best we can. 
Um, it's fully open up on this end, so look, I'm just gonna put a bit of plastic in here. Um, I've got my dipstick tube down in here, so look, I really just wanna make sure that nothing's gonna drop down into there as well. I'm pretty clean when I do it, but um, look, stuff does fly everywhere. Now I have seen a lot of other people who do this and they tape this up first and then they put this on. Um, I've read the instructions a couple of times. It does not suggest that and I wouldn't agree with that method either. The reason being is if that tape is not perfectly flat on here and this jig is slightly askew, when you drill and we drill a long way down, there's not a lot of material here and if we start getting a little bit close on one side, um, we potentially could break through and that's something that I really don't want to happen. So I'm just gonna tape this up. Look, tape is cheap, so if you need to put more and more tape on to feel that you've fully covered it, just do that. Um, and I'm just gonna put a rag up over this side as well just to stop anything flying that direction. Okay, now because I've done this a few times, I've marked depths of the drill and things like that. So look, in this instructions, it gives you very detailed numbers that you need to drill to and measure to and all the, where the measurements come from, etc., etc. So read this. Um, I'm not gonna try and share all that because look, you might be doing it for a different application, but I've marked mine. Um, now, all the measurements are from the deck height, not from this, but I've actually remarked it. And I keep this jig on the entire time while I'm doing it. Um, and in the kit, you get these depth guides and things like that. So it is pretty easy to do, but just triple check everything. You do not want to drill down too far or not far enough. Okay, so the next step here is we're about to drill this um, hole. Obviously, we'll pull that out. Again, double check that you're um, nice and centered in the middle of that hole. Um, a bit of cutting oil or cutting fluid has come in the pack, so um, just put a few drops in there, and a few drops on here. Now, it is a nice big drill bit, so we do want to go fairly steady and fairly slow. So, let's hack into it. Now, I can feel it cutting quite nicely. I, from my angle, I can also see these uh, grooves or flutes, or I'm not sure what they're called on a drill bit, um, starting to fill up with um, the chips. Now I've done a few of these, so I kind of know how far I can go before I've got to clean it back out. Um, but then I'd grab a vacuum cleaner, and I haven't turned it on yet just because I'm thinking it's gonna overshadow my audio. Um, but we're about to turn the vacuum cleaner on and I'll pull this back out and collect all that swarf and cuttings. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. Now remember I've pre-measured so I actually want to get that tape to the top of that. We should be able to go down the last sort of centimetre or so now. So that's up to my mark, but again, like I said, I've measured this countless times and I've done all my other holes, so I'm super confident with my marking there. Now with most of that cleaned out, I'm just going to take out this little guide. Now there's still a lot of chips in there because this engine's sitting up on a bench here. Um, look, I've got to get them out. A vacuum won't get them out because look, it just sucks here and it just doesn't do it. Um, I am going to use an air hose. I can't stress enough how easy this is to blow chips out everywhere and blow them into your face because it will blow straight back this direction. Um, I'd also encourage you to get a really long straight one. Um, I actually brought a new one because mine had a bend in it and you just couldn't get it right down into the bottom of that hole, which is where I want to go. 
Now what I'm going to do is slowly put a bit of air pressure on here but have the vacuum here as well just to grab all those chips as they fly out. Okay, just having a little look here, um, there's just some remnants of that oil and stuff on there. Um, but there is a nice clean hole. I can kind of see, I uh, kind of can see deep down in there. I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. Um, but now let's keep moving on. Now if you notice so far, I don't have um, swarf chips and stuff everywhere. I've tried to keep it really clean, uh, thoroughly covered everything. I'm pretty happy that nothing has gone where it shouldn't go. I'm also happy because this sit, sitting directly on the block that nothing is snuck in underneath there because it's still locked down tight. Okay, so now we've got this next sleeve. You can see it does get a few little scratches or marks in it from where the threads go in. That's not a problem. Um, what I like about this one, it's got a groove in it as well. So you don't kind of have to do this up as tight. So that'll sit in there like that. Now for my application, I'm grabbing the three fluted tap, I think that's what they call it. There is another one provided, but this works perfectly for the Kias. Um, we're going to put a bit of cutting oil on this. Put it down in the hole as well. 